Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Now, I'm sorry this one's a tiny bit late, but I had to go back and put in another five or so hours just to make sure that I hadn't missed something. Because unfortunately, as it stands right now, Koei Tecmo's fairy tale has a lot and I mean a lot of issues. They range from gameplay to some seriously concerning performance issues that need to be discussed. A big thanks to Koei Tecmo for providing the code. Is this less of a fairy tale and more of a nightmare? Or will it get a happily ever after? Let's find out. <laughs> In terms of the storyline, it's based on the very popular anime series of the same name that features the guild of companions and friends, the fairy tale. This time around, you're dropped into the action just as the teams are getting their ass handed to them on a plate and have to use a special type of unifying magic, which unfortunately not only protects them, but it means that time is stretched and that small moment in time actually elapses seven years in the real world. When they return to their lives, nobody knows who they are, and they've gone from being the once high and mighty top-notch guild to the lowest of the low. Some of them owe rent money, others have lost family members, and the guild itself is looking like my shed in the garden. A bit of a mess. But oh look, what a wonderful coincidence. There's a competition coming up that we can enter that will restore our status, and if we win it, we'll be the number one guild again. <sighs> Yeah. And what follows is countless dozen hours meeting old acquaintances for seemingly no reason clearly just for the fans, who pop up with the most ludicrous introductions, such as one early example where you're essentially summoned to see a powerful deity because the world is at risk, and then when you get there, he just missed you and wanted you to come along for a tea party. <laughs> no joke. As long as they were wearing their divine clothes, and I use those in air quotes, because it seems that clothing in this game has a tendency to dissolve at random times, for seemingly no reason, but again, I'm sure that's more to do with the anime than gameplay. While I'm convinced that fans of the series will be salivating at the prospect of their favourite characters rolling around in the sand, or old enemies returning who have suddenly made a complete turn in their lives so that they can actually join you and be a part of the adventure, be damned with the source material and prior motives. I've regained my memory, I remember everything that I did that was bad to you and I'm so sorry. Sheesh. Still, as I say, for fans of the series you're gonna get some value here because pretty much every character is brought back into the fold at different times and you'll have the chance to control many of them. Side activities and missions carry no weight whatsoever. I've lost my clothes in the forest, please can you go and get them? Okay, I will, I will. In terms of the gameplay then, you control one of several members of Fairy Tale, and this change is dependent on the mission that you're choosing. As mentioned, your main early goal of the game is to re-establish the guild and build it back up into prosperity. This is achieved by choosing and completing various missions with a ranking system from the guild board, 99.999% of which go something like this. Choose Quest. Quest asks you to go and find a random location or item on a map. Check Map. Map shows a flag in an area. Teleport to area, speak to person, grab item or kill monster and return. And look, I know this is not something that most RPGs haven't done for many years. Unfortunately, it just feels like it's minimum effort. It's incredibly generic. And when you have this rich source material to work from, it's even more unforgivable in my opinion. Now, thankfully, the game has a fast travel system allowing you to quickly, literally jump from the guild to the area you have to go to and back again, but the motivation to do so certainly does dwindle after the first seven hours or so. Combat is a large part of the game, and I will say this is probably the best area of the title. You can choose your character groupings to work together, and when performing special attacks, these will chain abilities, and you'll be able to use QTEs, quick time events, to improve the potency of these joint attacks. Another area of the combat which is nice, but also slightly flawed in my opinion, is that your magical abilities have a different area of attack. So for example, this one here might show a shape which will affect the enemies in this arc. However, why they didn't include the ability to rotate your magical arcs a bit like Tetris and give it a touch of strategy is beyond me. Still, it did add a tiny bit of strategy in that some more powerful spells had a different area of attack, so you didn't want to use them. You'd rather focus on the single enemy with a potentially lower damage move that's focused on that one area. You can also do standard attacks, but they're essentially null and void as they do little to no damage. There's the usual array of items you can dish out during combat to heal your companions, or you can defend your character. Awakenings add a much needed injection of variety into the gameplay and allow you during combat to unlock new power within. You can shift, for example, between two different styles, one increasing your base power but keeping the same moveset and another fully unleashing your dragon abilities. 
but at the cost of much higher MP use. Aside from that, you have equipable Lacrima, the slots of which unlock depending on your character's level, and they'll grant you a variety of boosts, such as raising your overall HP or your standard attack. But as their abilities are so intrinsically tied to their characters in the anime, it can feel a little bit out of your hands in terms of what new skills are developed, and as your character levels, he simply gains more of the powers. Contrast this with something like a Final Fantasy title, where you've the control to branch out in a direction, magically speaking, that you choose, and it can feel a touch limiting here. One other interesting choice that Fairy Tail makes is the ability to do over damage on characters to unlock new areas. For example, there might be a down tree in the background in combat that's blocking a path in the over map, and if you can do enough over damage, so basically completely obliterate your enemy, it will also destroy this foliage in the background allowing you access to a new area, secret items, etc. There are lots of little moments like these throughout the game where you can see the developer trying a few new things and that's where it works best. It's whenever it returns to the generic that gameplay suffers and unfortunately it does that far more often than not. There are several individual character based story missions which can be undertaken which progress their lines and this was nice. It meant that relationships between your party were grown and built upon which is something that can often be overlooked but the execution is a little heavy handed with a good deal of assumptive writing based on prior knowledge and the moment that really turned me off was when there was a level gate for the next section of the game that essentially said right you're level 10 now you need to be level 20 before you can progress. See you later and you have to just go and grind. And I thought, nah, no thanks. And as we'll see in the visuals and audio section, not a great deal of audio visual synchronicity in terms of the music and action going on screen or the current drama being juxtaposed with unusual audio choices. Overall for me, story and gameplay, Scores are combined 13 out of 20. Controls are fine with the ability to change axes and tweak sensitivities. However, they are negatively impacted by the performance. Control score 16 out of 20. Let's look at the visuals and performance then. And I'll start with the positives. The character models and designs are a true reflection of the anime. And not only that, but you'll meet many of the series best with the Japanese voice actors doing an excellent job for the most part. In battle, some of those combo moves are excellent. And well, that's it. I'm gonna let performance speak for itself. The frame rate in your guild house is 20 frames per second locked out. As you leave the house, the next area is 30 frames per second locked out. And then in town, it's an unlocked 20 to 30 FPS, but it hovers at around about 21 or 22. What this means for the player is a very juddery and stuttery experience that actually made me feel quite nauseous. It's not improved as the game goes on and the only area that doesn't really suffer from this is when you're in combat. That tends to be 30 FPS, but it also has some inconsistencies. The world map, which is essentially a hand-drawn image, is running at 20 FPS for some unknown reason. Load times are also a mixed bag. The initial loading into the game takes a long time. However, jumps to your guild are almost instantaneous and that's actually quite impressive. Visual quality on the characters is okay, I like their designs, but there is quite a bit of aliasing, jaggy edges on these. In terms of the clarity and design of the backgrounds, they're another area that just tick a box, looking generic and flat with lifeless NPCs dotted around for good measure. My initial impressions of the audio were good ones. <laughs> The voice acting is strong and it's well delivered by the cast with the subtitles large enough to see in handheld mode. Likewise, the musical scores are decent. Some of them are quite catchy. However, in a similar vein to something like Dragon Quest XI S, sometimes the on-screen action just does not match the tone of the music being provided to the player. They'll have discovered that their long-lost father is dead, only to have an upbeat and lively cheerful jingle playing in the background. It doesn't to me feel like an artistic choice, but more one that's going to save some time, and unfortunately it negatively impacts the game. I've not experienced any crashes with the game, which I guess is one saving grace, but overall the performance of the Switch port is not adequate. Visuals and performance, score. 8 out of 20. I'm pleased they included a fully voice acted cast, but the mismatched music lets it down. Still overall okay, audio scores 14 out of 20. That takes us on to value then, and the game is expensive. It will set you back £54.99 or $59.99 or your regional equivalent, which is top tier pricing and obviously 
it's available physically so you can probably find it for less than that what i personally would expect from a premiumly priced game is premium performance gameplay and sound that's been well thought out and i personally don't think that's what we've got here with some length stretching measures such as reach this level before you can progress and an absolute swathe of fetch questing are going to put a lot of players off who might otherwise find some real value here i've always enjoyed the tried and true rebuilding formula that some of these rpgs take the word of the day for me here is generic and it didn't really work for me plus you've got the poor performance factor to take into account and then really you're not going to want to get this on switch you're going to want to look elsewhere as you'd expect it's a reasonably long experience but is that quality or quantity i'll let you decide value for me scores 11 out of 20. <laughs> Overall, I wasn't a huge fan of Fairy Tale, as you could probably tell. However, I tried to give it a fair shout and looked at every aspect of the game, and in each area I found flaws, unfortunately, as it stands right now. If you do want to buy the game, you, you look at what you see and you think, okay, a generic RPG that's got my favourite characters in is something that I want to play, then by all means, but please do pick it up on a console that is running it at at least 30 FPS it gets a switch up score of 62%. Do let me know down in the comments what you thought of this one. I tell you what's gonna happen, the fans of Fairy Tale are gonna be annoyed that I gave it a very low score, but if you listen to what I've said, hopefully you'll hear that I'm trying to be as fair as possible and make sure that you don't spend a big chunk of money on something that you're not gonna be satisfied with. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month, and as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! ゼレフを殺すために生まれし それがゼレフ書の悪。氷。俺の枕。大事なもんなら、もう話しちゃいけねえ。氷って。燃えろ。行くぞ。